Um, there are there, there are several things that you should be aware of that will be part of this initial budget proposal, uh, especially uh, some cost drivers that are in it. And um, I'll try to highlight them. I'm not going to I'm not going to say that. Uh, every, one, every one, but certainly the major ones that we need to be concerned about, uh, I'd like to go over. Every year we deal with health insurance as, as one of our primary cost drivers. Uh, since we've switched to school care, not only have we uh, received more favorable rates from school, school care, but they adopt firm rates in November. We expect we will have those firm rates next week. They have not been established yet. Um, school care told us that the rate increase would be 10% or less. That's a big increase, but it's a lot less than we're used to. So when we were building the preliminary budget, we budgeted for a 10% increase. In reality, it should be less than that, but that 10% increase costs us $200,000. So $200,000 of whatever increase this, uh, is in this budget is health insurance. Dental insurance, we also um, have through um, school care. Uh, that is expected to go up around 6%. It's a much smaller premium than the health insurance. That represents a $10,000 increase. The big one, and I think that I've spoken to the board about this before, is a change in the employer's contribution to the New Hampshire retirement system. And for teachers, our contribution is going to increase from 11.3% to 14.16%. That's a 2.86% increase uh, in our contribution to teachers retirement. Uh, quick and dirty, if a teacher were making $10,000 a year, this year we contributed 286 dollars. Next year, we were, I'm sorry, this year we would have contributed $1,130. Next year, we would be contributing $1,416, an increase of $286 on a $10,000 a year person. And I use that just for, to demonstrate. For the rest of the employees in the in the school district, non-teaching employees, we're currently contributing 8.8%, and that increases to 10.77%, which is an increase of 1.97%. That's a major increase. It's a shift from the state to local communities. The, the, the state used to contribute 35% of the employer's contribution to retirement. That has dropped to zero. So we're paying the full freight. That is an additional $200,000. Uh, Do you need the percentages for the teachers? Yes. Currently, 11.3% increasing to 14.16%, and employees currently 8.8, .8, increasing to 10.77. And the bad news is that depending on a couple of cases that are going to the Supreme Court, that the Supreme Court may hear within the next year, if the people bringing suit prevail our contribution could increase even more. So there's a court case out there, a fairly significant court case, um, that has not been heard, but is going to be heard by the Supreme Court. Uh, 
in special education, uh, I think you're aware of the fact that in many ways we celebrate uh, the services that we're able to give to our most needy youngsters. Uh, but sometimes those services are extremely expensive. And sometimes it only takes a couple of changes in programs, I'm sorry, the change in program for just a couple of youngsters to result in an extremely uh, significant cost increase. Our special education tuition costs will rise by $575,000. A big, it's a big hit, but it is something that, that, that we have no control over. <clears throat> the, we've talked a lot about Common Core. Can, can you just ask a question? Sure. How much of that is, is don't, don't we get federal money? Say, like, we, no. Uh, the IDEA money is separate from the operating budget. So there are special education expenses that are paid for with federal money that are not part of the operating budget. You can't supplant with federal funds. So whatever historically we're paid for out of IDEA, IDEA we would continue to pay for, but it's not an offset to the regular budget. Uh, math adoption. Uh, is really all part, you're going to hear us talk, I think, during the budget process about Common Core. Um, we need to take Common Core seriously and not underestimate the impact of the Common Core adoption on what we do on a day to day basis. Uh, I see the math program just increased in cost. Um, <laughs> The Common Core will change what we teach and how we teach it. And our effectiveness as a school district will be measured on a new test. Uh, NECAP is on its way out and Smarter Balanced test is on its way in. And the Smarter Balanced test is based upon the Common Core. How well we perform on a high stakes test is going to be dependent on how well we implement the Common Core. And it revolutionizes what we teach and how we teach it. So the, the, the reading program that we uh, adopted uh, a few years ago uh, I think anticipated the Common Core, and we believe that it can be supplemented in order to meet Common Core standards. There isn't, I don't believe, a commercially available math program, or commercially available before now, that is Common Core compliant. Uh, and my sense is every school district in America is going to have to replace its math program. Uh, we're piloting two math programs this year across the SAU. Uh, our estimate is that the math adoption to adopt a Common Core compliant program will cost us $296,693. So it's just under $300,000. Uh, whoever has the Cauley book, you, you're going to notice that there is an increase in staffing at Cauley, two additional teachers. Uh, we had those two teachers in last year's request, and the board did need to cut those, I think, in the end in order to make our budget balance. Uh, Matt will be able to, dis to discuss in more depth the reason for those uh, two teachers, but it is to establish a team structure that remains constant over time. Uh, every year what he has to do is reconfigure his teaching teams and uh, teachers take on new and different teaching assignments. So you might have in one year uh, a, a teacher who teaches three sections of math 
and then has to pick up a section of social studies. And even though that teacher may be a veteran teacher and an outstanding math teacher, they are, in effect, a first-year teacher when it comes to their teaching of social studies. He has to reconfigure every year, and we believe it has a negative impact on student performance. So we requested these two positions last year. They were not able to be funded. My philosophy is if we needed them last year, we still need them. So they are in this preliminary request. And the cost of those two college teachers is 136610 There's some technology in this budget request that is there for the Smarter Balanced test. Uh, Smarter Balance is administered online. Uh, we have completed the survey of the equipment that we own. We have some sense of what is uh, going to be appropriate equipment to use and what equipment is not going to work. Uh, we don't have the final configuration for that technology yet, um, but we do have technology in the budget to support the Smarter Balanced test. And at least initially, uh, that's $80,000. Uh, I do have uh, a request, another staff request in the budget. Um, uh, I believe that our inability to uh, provide a director of language arts um, is uh, a liability. Uh, I think our teachers are overloaded and overwhelmed, and they need assistance. Uh, that position was cut from this budget, uh, from the current budget. Um, what I have in this budget is what I'm calling a common core facilitator, and that person would work exclusively in the area of language arts across the school district. It would be a teaching position rather than an administrative position that makes the work years shorter, but it makes the expense uh, somewhat less than if, if, if I were requesting uh, an administrative position. So that's in here. Uh, as we begin to get into this in more depth, uh, we, do, we have developed a job description for that uh, position, and we also have the job description of the Director of Language Arts uh, that certainly you could compare, but I can't underscore. Uh, I, I think our need to provide tangible support for our teachers, this common core shift is astronomical. It changes significantly what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think it's unfair for us to expect that they're gonna become expert on the common core and how to weave the common core into existing curriculum. That's an effort that really is our responsibility. Um, then there's the whole, and I guess after yesterday, whether you're happy or sad about what happened, um, sequestration is something that we're watching very, very carefully. And it would appear that based upon election results, it's more of a reality. Um, sequestration comes out of um, an action that the Congress took, and it was the balanced budget deficit reduction uh, act. And what sequestration means is if Congress hasn't adopted a balanced budget, which they haven't done in the last four years. If they haven't, uh, I don't mean a balanced budget, if they haven't adopted a budget by January, and they just come into session in January, then there are automatic cuts that take place in federal spending exclusive of the military, uh, that cuts that take place in discretionary spending. Part of that will be education. 
what we're being told, and nobody knows until it happens what the impact of it is, that that could result in an 8 to 10 percent reduction in our federal funds. Um, and most notable of those federal funds would be Title I funding and the IDEA funding, which is federal money that pays for special ed expenses. And do, you, do we know what our IDEA grant is? Just in round numbers. Three hundred thousand. So that becomes, if it's a ten percent cut, that's that's thirty thousand dollars that we need to come up for to pay for existing expenses that are being paid for through federal funds. It's not all bad news. Uh, high school tuition is actually down by three hundred thousand dollars. And we used the same methodology we used the last year to estimate what that high school tuition would be. Um, and then lastly, we have two collective bargaining agreements that are not part of this request. But nevertheless, assuming that we reach a settlement with the two bargaining units we're currently negotiating with, there'll be two warrant articles on the ballot for the voters to approve those collective bargaining agreements. So those are, I believe, uh, the most significant uh, areas of increase and or decrease in this request. Mm 